Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey and I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. Got a great episode for you today. Our topic is new technologies for breast imaging and our guest is Dr. Chirag Pargi. He is chief medical officer of Solus Mammography. Dr. Pargi, thanks for being with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm a longtime fan and enthusiast. It's really fun to be on the program today to talk about some more technologies in breast imaging. So just a little bit about me. I am an engineer by training, by undergraduate training, and then I went to medical school and just became obsessed with radiology. And so I did a, a after my training, I became an, a fellow in breast imaging and I entered a private practice and grew a breast specialty clinic and then multiple clinics and really, really accelerated the use of technology in our clinics at scale. And as I was growing, we had a partnership in my practices with Solus Mammography. And I pursued my MBA at the same time, and I was always just kind of interested in how things work at scale. And since then, just you know, fast forward a few years after 10 years of private practice, I was looking for a new challenge, and I was able to, to get in this role where we are really accidental experts of breast imaging at scale. And we get to, to work with technology, with clinical modifications, with just new ideas in breast imaging at scale. So it's been a really fun ride. I've been in this role for about two and a half years, really learning a lot and, and seeing great opportunities to really advance patient care. And Solis operates a number of breast centers across the U.S. How many do you have? Yes, sir. We are more than 120 clinics wow. nationwide. We are the largest wow. independent provider of, of mammography services. And that's our focus factory. We're not trying to do 500 things. We want to find women in the community that haven't gotten their mammograms give them the highest quality mammography experience and find their cancers as early as possible. In addition to maybe even screening for other diseases like we'll talk about. Mm, that's great. So um, AI, AI has been just a hot topic in radiology for the last few years. And um, at the last RSNA, I think somebody said it should be called RSNA AI <laughs> because AI yeah. was so dominant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and breast screening is one of the use cases that's been really, really exciting. And 2023 saw a lot of you know really exciting papers about how uh, AI can change breast screening. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Sure. What, what did sure. you see at RSNA that you thought was really interesting? I, I agree with you. I think that the world of breast screening luckily is at the front of the line because of just the, the subjective and somewhat ambiguous nature of our field. We catch tiny spots of cancer with visual detection in a mess tiny needle in a massive haystack. So it's the perfect opportunity for new technologies and new innovation like AI. So definitely that was at the at the forefront. But what I enjoy also seeing is some of these companies are asking very unique questions. What else can we get on this mammogram? And even just broader outside of mammography, what else can we learn on the chest x-ray? What else can we learn on this patient that comes in for a kidney stone workup? Hey, maybe they're osteopenic and they're going to get a compression fracture in a few years. Our software will find this out before it would ordinarily happen in the system. So as an iconoclast, I love seeing creative applications of AI in general radiology, but specifically in mammography, where we say, hey, what are we missing? Because it seems like we're always missing a lot. And how do we use our technology to prevent us making accidental misses? Yeah. So were there particular papers that you, you thought yeah. were really, uh, really interesting? Yeah, absolutely. Within the breast sphere, I thought there were some great ones um, that came out of NYU that are talking about how these these AI applications are getting to next level when they're when they're comparing to prior exams. So right now, the technologies are all looking at the current exam for the most part, but now they're really delving into how can we make this even better by comparing to prior. So one of the challenges with AI technologies on current screening mammography is it flags too much stuff. It almost creates more noise, and so you're you're challenge with reading the, the mammogram itself, but then you're challenged with processing all the voluminous data that the AI tool sees. But now they're getting even more signature where they're comparing the AI tool will not only look at the current mammogram, but they'll look at prior sets as well. And there was a very interesting paper at NYU that was presented where they talked about the more prior sets of data that the tool ingested, the more accurate it became. 
which is fascinating. So it can really track the evolution, which is a really cool tool set that can augment our interpretation and most importantly, catch more cancers accurately. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's segue to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we, we're we seeing in breast screening. And, and I think a lot of our viewers are probably familiar with some of them, but at Solus, you know, you guys have so many centers and, and, and mammography is just so the, the only thing that you do. What, what's your perspective on what some of the biggest challenges in, in mammography and breast screening are? Access. Access is a very big one. And we talk about screening solely and access to screening is a challenge in many communities. But after a screening mammogram is performed, about 10% of the time it's read as abnormal, in which case that patient needs extra pictures, which we call a diagnostic mammogram. That access to the diagnostic mammogram has been has been magnified in terms of a shortage in the last few years because of the radiologist shortage. So while screening mammograms are sometimes challenging, getting that diagnostic mammogram for a woman that knows there's an abnormality that's in a heightened state of anxiety, getting that second mammogram is even harder. So creating intelligent access and meaningful access to patients is, is really, really tough. On top of that, we aren't standardized. I, I, I hate to speak ill about my own tribe, but if you go to one radiologist, you may something may be called as abnormal. You go to another radiologist, something else may be called as abnormal. Now, there's a lot of good intent, and we, we've historically rationalized everything with good intent. Well, everyone has a good intent, but from a patient experience, that's not standard. And so that's another big opportunity where I think these technologies can help us get more standardized. Well, so let's let's dive into the technologies and and how do you, how do you think that technology specifically can help? And and, and I guess when we say technology, we're kind, we're kind of talking about AI, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though there's 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 there's, there's other opportunities as well, but AI is a big disruptor because at its core, it puts data on otherwise ambiguous tasks in my mind. And ambiguity can lend itself to tribalism and all sorts of outcomes. So in visual detection, there were a lot of extremely well-intended, very well-trained radiologists looking at screening mammograms. But what are they going by? They're going by their own visual intuition. At the end of the day, it's whatever stands out to Dr. So-and-so is what gets called out. And what I like to say, and I get quoted a lot for saying this is, Cancer is often, it's actually defined, breast cancer is defined as when a radiologist sees something on a mammogram. That's how we define it in the current state. But as, as you can tell, that's not good enough. It's right? very subjective. It's extremely subjective. And at the same time, we see a lot of things on the mammogram, some of which are breast cancer. With different radiologists, that ratio of how much is cancer to how much is absolutely nothing or nothing to be worried about, that changes nationwide and it's not standardized. And so with, with tools like AI, we can reshape the way we look at a mammogram and say, hey, you don't need to call that back. Statistically speaking, reference to a massive data set, that doesn't look like cancer. Or if you're on the fence and eh, that looks a little concerning, you can call it back. And I've had these cases of four millimeter cancer, smaller than my knuckle, that I've, I've caught that I otherwise, I have to be honest, I would have, I would have disregarded. Wow. Now, we've been talking right now about image analysis and kind of pattern analysis, but another really interesting topic that came out at RSNA 2023 was this idea of opportunistic screening, yeah. which is being able to, to detect pathology and disease from a scan that was acquired for a totally different application. And in, in breast imaging, breast arterial calcification or BAC is one of those potential, um, you know, tools for opportunistic screening. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and BAC and how it's a risk factor for heart disease? Absolutely. If, I, if you'll give me some latitude to step back just a little bit and kind of go big picture, we poorly understand women heart disease in this country. Heart disease, you know, our understanding of heart disease, it's purely a male phenomenon because a lot of the sentinel papers were based on older men. And the consequence of that, while obviously men are important, the consequence of that is after decades, the cardiovascular benefit has occurred asymmetrically in older men. And if you look at cardiovascular mortality, it's asymmetrically enjoyed by men, older men, and it's the, the benefits haven't occurred in women, particularly younger women. 
who are getting heart attacks at unprecedented rates. And isn't heart disease the number one killer of women? Yes, yes, it's yeah. the number one killer. And the interesting, I could talk about this for hours, so I'm gonna be more circumspect, but if you look at women diagnosed with breast cancer, after the first five years, especially after the first year, and maybe a couple more, heart disease kills almost as much as breast cancer recurrence. So even in patients with breast cancer, heart disease is incredibly important. So we have what the point I'm trying to make is there's a big need for us understanding who needs extra attention. At the same time, mammography programs have been successful in screening nationwide. And there is this finding, breast arterial calcium, which when there's calcium in the walls of the arteries of the breast, it's almost like the pipe is getting a little bit stiffened because of these calcium deposits. It's, it's a disease. It's a, an abnormal finding. But traditionally, in our teachings and in our practices, we haven't put much emphasis on this. When I was in training, I was told, oh, it's a do not touch lesion. Don't worry about it. Don't You can report it if you want to, but this isn't cancer. We look at a mammogram and say, is there cancer or not? That's been our binary kind of training and mindset. But this binding is associated with cardiovascular risk, and that's, that's pretty clear in the data. Now, it's not going to say who's going to get a heart attack tomorrow, but it identifies women that could benefit from additional cardiovascular screening at the very least. So we're very excited at Solus at offering this to our patients. And these calcifications, this is something that that it, it's on the mammogram, correct? This isn't something that you need to do like another image acquisition. Correct. Huh? It's on the mammogram. It's a relatively easy finding. It's unambiguous. We can, we can look at it and say, yeah, yeah, there's spots of calcium. But the challenge is our radiologists are very busy and they do very good work and they don't have the bandwidth. And I speak as one of... One of them, I don't have the bandwidth to look on every single slice of a, you know, of a 50 image stack and look for tiny areas of calcium. I could do it, but it's not a good use of my time, right? The perfect opportunity for AI software to help us focus on our task of finding breast cancer while also making sure we're screening the right patients to see cardiologists. So it's these secondary two for opportunities I get really excited about. And it's it's going it goes beyond mammography and it's happening in CT imaging as well. But within mammography, you can serve a patient base that's already underdiagnosed for heart disease and screen women. Now it's not perfect, it may miss some, but you'll at least start towards screening women that need to potentially get additional cardiovascular screening. And are there currently software tools or AI tools that will do this, that will analyze a mammogram and detect uh, signs of BAC? Yes, yes. And we are we are using them in in our centers and we're excited and we're in the development phase on some and we're we're using some in our centers. And these these tools are are effective because it's an easy finding. This isn't something that's a subjective, difficult finding. So breast cancer is very thorny at times. There are certain types of breast cancer, like invasive lobulars, they keep us all humble because they're very hard to diagnose. BAC is not in this camp. Breast arterial calcium is an easy finding, but it's a it's a labor issue. We don't have the bandwidth to find every single patient that has it and report it to them. So let's let's walk through a patient who might have BAC detected on their mammogram. So so they come in, they come in for a, a routine screening mammogram, and let, let's say, let's say that the mammogram is normal just to make this all a little yeah, bit easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there is some BAC detected on it. What is the workflow from there? Yeah, and this this is a good question. This is in development. Let me be clear. We are working through this, and this challenge can paralyze a lot of radiologists and a lot of practices because it's it's change management. But currently, just to answer your questions, patient comes in if their breast if their mammogram is read as normal for breast cancer, so a BIREDS two or something. Hey, come back in a year, but they have BAC present. Our philosophy at Solus is that the patient should get to know if they know that information. And if they have that information, they can be given that along with some context of what does this mean. We don't want to scare patients into thinking they're going to get a heart attack tomorrow, but we want to empower patients with the knowledge of their findings and say, you have this finding, talk to your primary care physician or potentially go see a cardiologist for additional screening. We don't know their full history. We don't know what other risk factors they have, but that patient at the very least needs to know that they have that as a potential risk factor and also began a conversation. And if you look at other studies, they've shown about half of these patients in a, in a small cohort went on to get additional imaging. And of that, a smaller percentage went on to get a formal coronary angiogram where they go in kind of through the groin or wrist. And then of that, a smaller subset even proceeded to go on to get cardiac surgery. So this is kind of an, it's an opening 
to having a discussion with the patient to say, hey, is there something we're missing here? Does this patient need additional attention? Not all of them will need a full full nine yards you know, evaluation, but it, it at least is a starting point for an effective screening program. Do, do you feel radiologists are ready to take that on or does there need to be some education? That's a great question. I don't think we're there yet. I think there's too much change happening too quickly. And one one challenge, and I'm going to throw a grenade at my own field because I'm not scared to do it, is we think too myopically. We have too much ideological myopia where we think of ourselves as breast imagers only looking for breast cancer because that's the way we've been trained, right? And we, what I, what I've had spirited discussions with my colleagues in that breast arterial calcium, among other things, are called incidental findings. Why? Because we as a field called it incidental. Now, there's meaningful disease insight, but we've already labeled it. We've labeled it this incidental finding, which means it is a lesser finding that requires lesser focus. And it is, it, it, it's, there's a lot of reticence to get involved and to see what else can we do with this. So it, it is, does require an ideologic shift in us thinking about what's happening in our communities, what's happening to patients with heart disease, and how can we make a difference there? And, and so this is something that you are working out at Solus. It sounds like no. this isn't yeah. something that you rolled out throughout your your network, but you're you're testing it, and and it'll be something that probably you'll you'll roll out in stages over time. Absolutely. Well, at Solus, we're our from our leadership down. If it's going to benefit the patient, we're we're excited about trying new ideas. And our radiologists are very progressive, very open to new ideas. They're they're curious, and so it's it hasn't been as difficult for us. But we're we're deep in the middle of that process, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to offer this to patients and our radiologists get excited about offering this to patients. All right, great. Sounds like a great service. Um, well, let's, uh, our, our time's coming to a close. I, I'd like to give you the chance, uh, Dr. Pargi, to, to maybe uh, ruminate a little bit on what you think the future of breast AI is going to be and, and, and where you see this field going in the next, you know, one to two years. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I have, I have strong opinions on this. I think right now it is a tool that's accretive it's added on to the way we do breast imaging. So a patient comes in, okay, I'm going to read it like I would any mammogram. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to put this tool on there and I'm going to interpret it like I would normally. And then, oh yeah, here's some extra information. I'm ready for that next iteration where we start dancing with it, where we change the way we read based on the technology. And that's an us problem that we're going to gradually get to. And then as these new updates happen, and as future risk predictions start happening, and as as the technology gets more and more accurate, I want it to solve different problems in breast imaging. I want it to solve the access problem, where I want the tools to let us know which patients really need a diagnostic mammogram. And we always think in our field, a diagnostic mammogram, which is that second level mammogram, if a screen's abnormal, if the patient feels something, we treat that all as the same. It's a very simplistic approach to medicine that I think needs to change. We need AI to tell us which of these diagnostic mammograms are the most important and need to be seen tomorrow versus next week. We need to really engage these tools to better triage our system. And our system and our workflows have to change and become leaner so that patients can get through faster. Right now, access to getting diagnosed with breast cancer is just, it's, it's bottlenecked for man-made reasons. And so I'd love to see some of the bigger hurdles get attacked by by these tools. And I'm sure that's a, a parable for other disease entities, is that we have to use it to really chip away at the bottlenecks that we've created. All right. Some great thoughts from uh, Dr. Chirag Pargi of Solus Mobography. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. I really enjoy the content you put out. So please keep, keep, keep doing it and keep, keep uh, providing us this wonderful content. Definitely we will. All right, uh, signing off for The Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey. Thank you, Brian.